Brazil's shipbuilding industry is entering a decisive phase, and the Tamandere-class frigates represent much more than a naval procurement program. For many Brazilians, they embody a shift in mindset. From importing warships to mastering naval design, manufacturing techniques, and eventually projecting industrial and maritime power across the South Atlantic. This transformation does not rely on loud declarations, but on a methodical and steady climb up the technological ladder, where each ship laid down contributes to an expanding domestic capability. The story of the Tamandare program is fundamentally a story of a Brazil that believes it can build, innovate, and shape its maritime destiny. The Brazilian audience understands that a strong navy is not merely symbolic. With over 7,400 kilometers of coastline, Brazil is a maritime nation by definition. The offshore oil basins, precious fisheries, underwater minerals, sea-based logistics routes, and what is often called the Blue Amazon all require security and monitoring. This is not militaristic posturing. It is rational stewardship of national assets. The Tamandere class fits directly into this logic. These ships patrol, deter, and ensure sovereignty with quiet confidence rather than theatrical threat. They carry sensors, weapons, and command systems that allow them to perform in multi-domain naval environments, from anti-submarine patrols to escort operations and precision maritime surveillance. What differentiates the Tamandere program from previous fleet acquisitions is the industrial component behind it. Unlike vessels imported fully built from abroad, this class integrates technology transfer agreements and domestic workforce development. Brazilian engineers, technicians, welders, structural designers, electrical specialists, and naval systems integrators all gain direct exposure to modern warship construction. This is how a domestic industrial ecosystem begins to mature. The objective is not simply to receive a finished ship, but to absorb the knowledge required to build ships independently later. This journey toward industrial autonomy mirrors the development path of other nations that rose to shipbuilding prominence. South Korea began as a recipient of foreign designs in the 1970s and is now one of the world's leading naval and commercial shipbuilders. Turkey leveraged licensing agreements in the 2000s to eventually design its own frigates and corvettes. Italy produced its modern shipbuilding competence by combining domestic capability with selective foreign collaboration. Brazil is now following a similar pattern, learn, internalize, industrialize, and eventually export. The Tamandere design itself provides important flexibility. Derived from the MECO modular concept, it allows continuous upgrades, swaps of onboard systems, and progressive nationalization of components. A radar or sonar suite bought today could be replaced by a Brazilian developed system tomorrow without redesigning the entire ship. The modularity of the architecture supports a layered technological ascent rather than stagnation. For a Brazil-based audience that values dignity and strategic independence, this approach resonates deeply. It shows that Brazil is not merely using foreign technology, but actively preparing to stand alongside other naval building nations as a peer. The program also stimulates domestic supply chains. Companies such as Embraer Defense, Avibras, Ares Aerospatial, Acair, and other Brazilian firms find roles in electronics integration, combat systems, materials engineering, and software design. 
Each contract strengthens internal capacity and reduces reliance on external vendors. This multiplier effect reaches universities, technical institutes, professional academies, and younger engineers who see naval engineering as a viable future. It creates a sense that building warships is not just for Europe, the United States, or Asia, but also for Brazil. Looking forward, the Tamandari is not the end state, but the beginning. If the initial series of frigates is successfully delivered and operated, Brazil will naturally move toward designing larger hulls. A heavy frigate or a light destroyer could very well be the next step. This does not require a dramatic declaration of great power ambition. It requires steady incremental capability. First designing hull geometries, then propulsion and structural dynamics, then indigenous combat systems, then advanced naval data networks. Over time, the percentage of each warship designed and produced within Brazil will rise. The strategic objective is not power projection in a confrontational sense. It is oceanic stability and status recognition. Brazil as guardian of the South Atlantic, Brazil as stable regional anchor, Brazil as responsible custodian of maritime heritage and resources. This vision appeals strongly to the national self-image of a country that sees itself as polite but firm, humble but capable, peaceful but not defenseless. The Blue Amazon is not a metaphor. It is a real strategic domain, and a navy equipped with domestically built frigates is the right tool to secure it. When considering how the Tamandere is perceived internationally, the comparisons are increasingly flattering. The global naval market is watching the program with growing respect. Shipbuilders in Europe and Asia no longer see Brazil as a simple hardware buyer. They see it as a rising competitor. If the Tamandare demonstrates reliability, cost efficiency, and modular adaptability, there is no reason it could not be exported. This prospects the future in which a navy not in Brazil, but in Africa or Southeast Asia, might one day operate a Brazil-designed warship. By 2035, a plausible scenario emerges. A Brazilian Navy where the initial Tamandere models are fully integrated, a second refined batch built with higher domestic content, and a locally designed follow-on class entering construction. In that future, Brazil will not only patrol its ocean, but will also influence shipbuilding standards, naval practices, and maritime security across the region. The international defense community would see Brazil as a maritime industrial nation rather than simply a geographically large country. For the Brazilian viewer, this is not a fantasy. It is a path already begun. The work is being done in dry docks, welding stations, design laboratories, naval software environments, testing facilities, and increasingly Brazilian-led engineering teams. Pride in this achievement is earned, not inflated. It grows naturally from the evidence of competence. If you believe Brazil can emerge as a leading naval builder of the South Atlantic, join us on this journey. Subscribe, stay with the channel, and be part of a narrative where Brazil rises through skill, knowledge, and persistence rather than noise or provocation.